everybody. Welcome to a brand new beautiful day. Here it is, Tuesday already, and here's Merlin. He was wanting to say hello to everybody this morning as well. So good morning from Merlin. <laughs> oh my goodness, he's being a pill this morning, so I had to scoop him up real quick. Anyway, good morning, everybody. It's great to have you here. And uh, <laughs> He's a little pill. He's four and a half pounds of trouble, that one, Merlin. Yeah, he's almost 15 years old. He will be 15 in April. And uh, every so often, he just gets a little, you know, bee in his bonnet. And uh, <laughs> I have to chase him around and scoop him up, which is what happened this morning. So good morning, everybody. It's good to have you here. And... Um, as we are getting ready to rock and roll this morning, if you would be so kind as to like and to share the show, that would be fantastic if you are so inclined to do so. And uh, yeah, oh, good morning. Look at everybody. Oh, thank you, Elise. I appreciate that. I'm going to check out. I love seeing everybody in the Facebook chat room. Love that. So I like to acknowledge everybody. Good morning, Katie Battle, sunshine yourself, and Sonia, good to see you. Rob, good morning. Jennifer, good morning. Hey, Shelly, good to see you in the house this morning. Cindy Lynn, thank you for being here. It's good to have you all with me. Hey, Jacqueline. Hello. Good morning, Jocelyn, again. <laughs> Hello, Rochelle. It's good to have you here. We're almost at the point of a super moon, a very potent super moon, which will be uh, gracing us tomorrow. And so we dedicate the show to the energies of Grandmother Moon and to our psyche and the Grandmother Moon aspects that reside within us. I'd also like to dedicate this morning's show to a very dear person who passed away yesterday. Uh, one of those people, you know how we have certain people in our lives that influence our lives to such a degree that we are never ever the same. And yesterday, one of those people in my life passed away. Uh, his name was Dick Morton. And how do I describe him other than a brawny Scotsman? and a newspaper man. He and I worked side by side every day for 15 years at the Grand Rapids Press. And Dick taught me the value of community service. Here in Grand Rapids, Michigan, he was one of the movers and the shakers. And he, along with his best friend, Fred Meyer, many of you know uh, Fred through his grocery store chain, Meyer. Uh, he and Fred and John Canepa, Mike Lloyd, oh my goodness, Dick DeVos, <laughs> all of them, movers and shakers here in the community. And yesterday, Dick passed. Dick not only taught me the virtues of honest business, but the importance of being an active member in our community and of giving to others despite our own losses. He himself lost both of his daughters, one at the age of 17 and the other at the age of 30. And despite all of those tremendous losses, he still continued to serve and to serve in a good way. And he was, in my estimation, the quintessential newspaper man that taught me everything that I ever needed to know about publishing about teamwork, and about giving others the platform to sail, to spread their wings, to push them out of their nest, out of their comfort zone. Some people wonder, where did I learn that anyway? Well, there are a couple of people, and the very first one was Dick, who gave this kid, I was only, what, 19 years old at the time, an opportunity uh, to do some pretty amazing things, as well as make sure that I, you know, received college education. So, uh, Dick, thank you. And to his beautiful wife, Janine, sending out lots of love. Thank you for all that you gifted me with in your teachings. And just by being the man, the man that you were, and the newspaper man that you were, and the beautiful spirit that you are, to Dick, who also loved his morning wakalapi. 
<laughs> as everyone knew. So with that, we're going to draw a card for all of us. For this morning. And as we are drawing from the Mystic Angels deck, we drew the card, the Archangel Saint Raphael. Raphael. The card of healers, the card of healing, the card of peace within, the card of taking off the blinders and having a realistic look-see. One of the ancient teachings that we learn about with regard to the angelics and the name Raphael and that angelic being known as Raphael is Raphael is known as the one who helps the blind to see. Oftentimes, we're blind to what is making us out of balance, feeling ill at ease, feeling out of sorts, or just plain sick. And when we call upon the Archangel Saint Raphael, Raphael, Angel of Healers, and those being healed, please help me to become well. One of the very first things that happens is the internal combustion connection when we call to the angelics that same energy within us responds. And one of the very first things that happens is that the blinders are taken off and we are able to see where the dissonance lies, where the dis-ease lies, where the imbalance exists. With the super moon that we are experiencing, it's beginning, you can feel it. We've been able to feel it for quite some time. It gives us an opportunity to really take a look within, to sort some things, to do some internal feng shui, and to really take stock, to really take stock. So Raphael, Archangel of healing, those being healed, those wishing healing, those wishing to see beyond the illusion that we create for ourselves, don't we? will be accompanying us if we so desire at this time. So this is a card of healing, taking a really close look, polishing the mirror, as they say. This morning, my son got a hold of me. He works at the newspaper now. He took up where I left off and he uh, flashed a photo of the obit. It was actually a photo that I took of Dick many, many years ago. And it really began a reflection time for me about how important our interactions with people are, how we speak to people, whether we're speaking to them through text messages, email, this way through this show, personal, the effects of our interactions with others can be lifelong. And we never know just how we're going to affect another person what the legacy is that we will leave. Years ago when I was pregnant for Dane, uh, Dick told me, he said, that child of yours is going to be born with ink in his veins. <laughs> because uh, every day at the newspaper and in the morning hearing those newspaper presses fire up, there is nothing in the world like hearing presses fire up. And uh, sure enough, Dane was born with ink in his veins and uh, there he is at the newspaper yet. So be mindful of your words, whether they're text messages, emails, whatever they happen to be. All right, here, let's get going this morning. Good morning, Angie. Looking forward to seeing you tomorrow night. Julie Hedges, I hope that you have heard from Katie Burt. Katie Burt is looking to get in touch with you regarding having her uh, solar return chart done. So I sent her information telling her she could get a hold of you on Facebook, but uh, she was looking for somebody to do her children's charts. And of course, that would be Julie Hedges. So, <laughs> all right, everybody, make sure you're sharing your information this morning. So Julie, if you could share where people uh, can reach you to have these charts done, that would be fantastic. Katie normally takes a look at the show. Okay, Rochelle. 
Rochelle, this card is for you. I'm picking this one for you. It is the sun face Kachina. Stand in the light. Stand in the light is the teaching of the sun face Kachina. Sometimes it's not easy to stand in the light. It's just not. Sometimes our own shadow, sometimes the darkness of the world, sometimes the darkness of our interior castle can overwhelm. A lot of things can overwhelm us. And sometimes it feels as though the darkness can be creeping in or the heaviness, call it what you will. Sunface Kachina legend says, stand in the light anyway. Stand in the light anyway. The most magnificent diamonds are forged, right? By the hottest fires. Just keep standing in the light and visualizing yourself shrouded in light, shrouded in light. You are welcome, Julie. Yes. Stand in the light. Visualize the sun face Kachina. We've been given the gift of visualization of all of our clairs for a reason, and that's to use them. Imagination, visualization, very important because what we hold here in our noodle, in our brain, informs the rest of our body. So if we are always holding images of horror or doomsday or whatever it happens to be, then the rest of our body responds to that. If we are holding an image of, say, the sun face Kachina of goodness and light, the rest of our body says, oh, look what the brain is focused on. Look at what the noodle is holding in its imagination. Let's respond to that. So being mindful and consciously aware. Very important. Okay, Shelly. Shelly, this one is for you. This is one of Kelly Spencer's favorites. It is the angel Shamshi L. Shamshi L says this, set yourself free. Whatever is holding you hostage, whatever is holding you bound to, let it go. Set yourself free to dance at this party called life. Sometimes we can be bound to the chains of self-doubt, right? Self-doubt, hopelessness, worry. What will the neighbors think? <laughs> Shamshiel says, forget about that noise. You came here to shine. You came here to live your life and your soul's avocation. Do that. You are free to dance at the party of life unfetter yourself. So under this super full moon, it would be a great good thing to take stock of anything that may be holding you back or anyone or any situation. As I'm honoring Dick Morton today in my show, one of the, his favorite songs was The Gambler by Kenny Rogers. And so I watched him wheel and deal for 15 years, day in and day out with huge players in the newspaper, in the printing industry. And he always used to say to me, his nickname for me was Charlie. He'd say, Charlie, you got to know when to hold them. You got to know when to fold them. You got to know when to walk away. And you got to know when to run. And if you can get those three things down in your business life, you'll be all set. So sometimes in our personal life, we do have to know when to hold them, when to fold them, when to walk away, and when to run. So Shelly, get out there and start dancing in your life. Let go of self-doubt or whatever, whomever may be holding you back. All right. Elise Miller. Elise Miller. It's the angel Ariel. Ariel is one of those magnificent angels that says, get outside and play. Go outside. Even if the go outside means you go outside, you stand on the stoop. I still call it the stoop. You stand out on the stoop and you take a deep breath of fresh air. Ariel says, go outside and absorb the energies of Grandmother Earth. Grandmother Earth is calling you. And you know, with this super full moon, there you go. Connie Vodder. Such a good show this morning. <laughs> oh, Connie. I love Connie. Good morning, Connie. Spiritual Mysteries of Life with Connie Vodder. Fantastic show. Fantastic woman. Dear friend of mine. Very dear friend. Cindy Lynn. 
Cindy Lynn. This one is for you. It is the Egyptian god, Sobek. What does Sobek teach us? Sobek teaches us that we are responsible for our knowledge, the wisdom we have gained, and our own personal power. How do you wield your personal power? How do you wield your wisdom? We are all responsible for that. The other aspect of Sobek is this. It is good to have safe boundaries, strong boundaries. So wherever your boundaries may be a little bit out of whack, Sobek says, strengthen up your boundaries. People, places, things, yourself, your own thoughts. And also, Sobek asks the question, how do you wield your power? How do you wield your knowledge? It's a very important teaching. Sandy Herrick and I were having a long conversation about that yesterday. She and I are having a tremendous time, a fabulous time, leading the Sacred Cup School of Divinity. And we have, what, 24 ministerial students in our class this year. She is the reverend who does the ordinations, and I am the religious ed teacher, as they say. I'm the religious ed teacher. I never thought of myself that way, but I am. And yesterday we were talking about the importance of having integrity in the teachings and holding space for others. Yeah. Hey, Julie. Oh, yes, Port Huron, February 15th. I may very well be there. If you've not seen Rob and uh, Julie perform, do yourself the great good favor of, of doing that. Spectacular. Hey, Susan Wilbur. Hey, Shelly, I just pulled a card for you. I just pulled the card for you, as a matter of fact. All right. Okay, dokie. Tana, good morning, Tana. It's good to see you in the house. Good morning, Delgadillo. All right, this one is for you, Delgadillo. It is the unicorn. The unicorn says this, shine your light. Let your light shine. Let your light shine. Sometimes when we are shining our light, people don't get it. They don't quite understand our unique light, our brand of light, call it what you will. And we need to shine it anyway, even when others don't understand our light. There are times when people don't understand my light, but I shine it anyway. They may not understand my path. They may not understand uh, my belief system, the way that I walk in the world. And yet I shine my light anyway, because that's what I came here to do. And so this is the message for you. Not everybody understands the way in which you shine your light or your belief system or the way that you are in the world, but your light is exquisite. It is needed. And sometimes the greatest resistance to the light that we're shining is because Sometimes it tweaks, what do I want to say? We can be a challenge to the balance of other people. We can challenge their balance with our light. And that's okay. <laughs> She's saying yes, laugh out loud. Shine it anyway. Shine it anyway. <laughs> Just like the unicorn. Hello, Jeanette. Good morning. All right. Sonia. Sonia. It's the hippogriff. 
a little lesson from mythology. I love these flask flashcards. Hey, Marianne. The hippogriff. Sonia, the message of the hippogriff is do not let your dreams die. Do not let your dreams die. Hippogriff also reminds us that sometimes our dreams change. Sometimes we can spend a lot of time trying to resurrect an old dream or to keep uh, a dream that's time has come to pass alive. You ever know people like that? And you want to just say, geez, I think it's time to give up the ghost on that one. <laughs> They're trying to keep it alive, even though it's well past its time. You know, the, uh, the due date was a long, long time ago. And then there are those that think that they can't have new dreams. Well, I'm 55. I certainly can't have new dreams. That's for young people. Baloney. Do not allow your dreams to die. Whatever your dream for yourself happens to be, feed that. And those dreams that have come and gone or those dreams that never came to fruition and maybe just aren't supposed to any longer, let those go. Whatever you are dreaming now, dream it well. Dream it well. Do not allow your dreams to die. And maybe there's a new dream that's trying to crop up. You can feel it. You can feel it when there's something new. It's like it's stirring on the inside of you. What is this? What is this feeling that I'm having? Where is this taking me? Oh, I don't know about that. New dreams often say, sit down for just a moment with me. And let's discuss this. Let's take a look at it. All right. Oh, let me have a look in the chat room here. Sometimes I just kind of get lost having so much fun with the other. All right. Hey, Katie Battle. Katie Battle. It's the Egyptian god Geb. This is about laughter. It's about joyfulness. It's about abundance. Geb is the god of vegetation, the god of fruits, the god of the flora and the fauna, the god of life and bringing things to life. Geb reminds us about the abundance in our life. Geb says that like the goose that laid the golden egg, this is a very fertile time in your life, Katie. What is it that you wish to fertilize? What is it that you wish to grow? Be mindful of the alchemy of our thoughts, of our desires, of our dreams. Sometimes people have been taught that if you want abundance, just sit and think about it for a while. Just think really hard about it. <laughs> just think really hard. Focus, focus, and that abundance is going to shower down upon you and land square in your lap. Well, you know, that would be nice if that were true, but the fact of the matter is it requires elbow grease, a little elbow grease. My dad used to call it that, elbow grease. It requires forward movement. It requires participation. Participation. This is a very fertile and abundant time in your life, Katie. Geb asks the question, what are you grateful for? And what would you like to have more of? And do you need to remove something from your life? Maybe it's a thought process, an old belief system, whatever it happens to be, in order to have more of that, of that feeling of abundance. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we have to shift and change things up, right? All right. <laughs> Sonia's saying, funny you should mention age. Hey, look, for those of you, and I hope, you know what, friend me on Facebook. Just go and add me as your friend on Facebook. And you get to see this video of yours truly this past Saturday at the age of 55 skiing for the first time. And so <clears throat> when I met my instructor, Patrick, he said, so how long have you been skiing? And I said, well, I haven't done it yet. So technically, 
zero. He said, you've never skied in your life? I said, nope, that's what I have you for. Let's go skiing, Patrick. <laughs> he said, okay, and out we went. Well, there's this great video of me accomplishing at least the bunny hill uh, before Patrick said, okay, it's time for the big girl hill. There aren't any videos of the big girl hill. But the point of the, of the whole discussion is this, we are never too old to dream something new, to set a new goal, right? Oh, my left knee is still talking to me. Of course it is. But what's on your bucket list? Work toward that. Make that come true. Your bucket list. Skiing was on my bucket list. All right. Here we go. Julie Holt Forsland. Oh, this is a good one. Julie, this one requires my glasses. That's right, Julie Hedges, grow and play. <laughs> you gotta. When Patrick said to me, so you've never skied? And I said, no, but I surf. I horseback ride. So, you know, that's, is it kind of sort of the same? And he said, well, I can't surf. He said, I tried to surf and that didn't work for me. So, okay, what you're telling me then is that you're all right with adventure and kind of living on the edge. I said, oh, yeah, I've been known to live a little bit on the edge. So, yeah, you got to get out there and have some fun, do some new things. All right, Julie Holt Forsland. This one is for you. It's the Archangel Ambriel. Isn't Ambriel adorable? And, Julie, I'm going to read this to you. I'm just going to read this whole thing, which requires the spectacles. Julie, when we can gaze into the mirror of another's eyes and see the face of God staring back at us, we understand the great mirror. When we can look upon the face of all creation and see the love of our maker dwelling there, we have become one with the mirror. Archangel Ambriel has come to acknowledge your ability, Julie, to see the oneness in all things. With this great gift that you possess, you have come to earth to help heal the world. Blessings be upon you. Most importantly, Julie, is the mantra of the Archangel Ambriel, and it goes like this. When I look in the mirror, I see the reflection of the Creator gazing back at me. That's one of the teachings of the mirror. It's very Buddhist in nature as well, because the moon, the polishing of the moon, happens at the time of the full moon if we desire to participate. This past weekend, as I was preparing uh, more of the syllabus for the ministerial uh, religious ed, I came upon a thumb drive of mine that had probably a hundred documents that I had written many, many years ago about several subjects uh, because I'm a nerd like that. And so I found them and I started downloading them. And one of my favorite documents is about the white brotherhood that exists to this day in Egypt. And I've met members of the white brotherhood. And the reason they're called the white brotherhood is that they dress in all white when they have ceremony still to this day. And they still, 5,000 years later, meet at the Great Pyramid at Giza on the Giza Plateau under the full moon. And what do they do under that full moon all dressed in white? Well, they meditate. They meditate. They contemplate. They do all kinds of interior castle work. The Buddha would say that they are polishing the moon. Polishing the moon, waxing the moon, taking a look at the interior castle. And uh, I'm not quite certain why I went on that whole thing, but there you go. If you're ever wondering about the White Brotherhood, <laughs> there you know. Years ago, they invited me to come with them. I was in Cairo at the time. And one of them happened to be walking into the perfumer while I was sitting there and uh, looked at me and he said, we would like you to come with us on the full moon. And I said, well, who are you? And where would you like me to go with you first and foremost? 
And he explained to me and I said, oh, my goodness, you still exist. And he said, yes, we still exist. And I have the feeling from you that you also meditate and you understand the mysteries. And I said, well, I think I'm beginning to understand at least a fraction of the very first beginnings of the mysteries. And he said, well, we would like you to meet us at the edge of the plateau. Well, it happened that I was going to Aswan that day. So I was in Aswan and unable to make it. But he was very clear in telling me that uh, I needed to dress all in white, in a white galabea. And I did have a white headpiece. So the moon and our connection to it is ancient. And in many ancient cultures, it is still, the mysteries are still understood. So we'll leave it at that and keep moving. Polishing the moon. Hey, Cindy, you beautiful thing. Cindy, this one is for you. It is the teaching, Native American teaching of what is known as the wampus cat from my spirit of mythology empowerment deck, the wampus cat. The wampus cat says this, it's about listening to the sacred stories. No different than listening to this gentleman talk to me about the white brotherhood. Moses was a member of the white brotherhood. Of course, many priests and priestesses. Listening to the stories. Sometimes the stories come to us in our dreams. Sometimes they come to us in our daydreams. Sometimes they come to us in prayer, meditation, contemplation. But sacred stories can also be revealed in nature. They can be revealed in the most unlikely of places. The Wampus Cat says this, Cindy, your life is transforming in beautiful ways. And Cindy, I want to read this first part of the message for you. This is, I believe, the onus of the message for you on this card. Because the depths to which we are able to descend are equaled by the heights to which we are able to ascend, the greatest teachers must walk through the greatest fires in order to teach with authenticity integrity, and compassion. Life's most potent initiations into the higher wisdom teachings are often found in life experiences that can seem unspeakably harsh and utterly devoid of light. And yet, each experience is necessary to your emotional, mental, physical, and spiritual growth. Congratulations on graduating to you to yet another level of higher understanding. And the daily mantra of the Wampus Cat is this, the experiences of my life do not happen to me, they happen for me. And uh, you have walked through some tremendous fires that most people would not be able to breathe or exist through. The greatest teachers do walk through the greatest fires. And I'm going to leave that at that. And uh, I am sending my love to you. Deep love. Jane Joubert. The Archangel Barshiel. Barshiel is the angel of Pisces. Those of you born under the sign of Pisces, Barshiel is part of your angelic squad. Barshiel says, Jane, welcome to a beautiful new phase of your life. Welcome to a new phase of your life. Whenever I pull this card, there are a couple of cards. I always hear Bob Seeger singing the song, Turn the Page. This is a brand new phase for you. Make it what your heart desires it to be. Know that you are loved. And I will repeat what I just said to Cindy, the greatest teachers walk through the greatest fires. It is true that the depths to which we can descend are matched by the heights to which we can ascend. That is not easy. Some people stop in the middle of the fire and they are destroyed. Others walk through the fire and like the phoenix, they are born again. 
You are welcome, Cindy. You're very welcome. Suzanne Ecker Coleman, AKA Connie Vodder's daughter. <laughs> oh goodness, I love Suzanne, the beautiful soul. The Archangel Barbiel. Barbiel is associated with Libra. Barbie, Barbiel says this, Suzanne, if you have fallen off of your spiritual path, that can happen. Barbiel invites you to hop back on the magic carpet and to begin to walk your spiritual path again. Get back on the horse, as they say, back on the bike. If you have fallen off, right? Sometimes we can get so busy with life, we forget, oh, that's right, we do have a spirit, we do have a soul. I do need to acknowledge that. I do need to work with my gifts of the spirit. Barbie else says, that's right, you do. So if your life is out of balance because you have forgotten your spiritual life or your spiritual gifts, Barbie else says it's time to re-acknowledge and get back on track. Barbie else, and ask Barbie L to be present with you. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's why we have the angelics with us. Wonderful teachings about the angels is particularly, I'm fascinated by the teachings of the angels with regard to Kabbalah. Kabbalah, some people say. Yes, and the realms of light. Yes. Yes, Jane is saying she really feels this moon. Yes, this moon is a doozy. It's a, that's the technical term, doozy. <laughs> it's a big one. And we can all feel it. It's pulling us from the inside out, sometimes the outside in or both. And what do you do with that? You need to sit and you need to be. And sometimes you just need to be with your thoughts and your feelings and your life and your soul. To come into balance, to be in balance during this time is very important. I had a friend of mine send a message to me. She said, am I, <laughs> Suzanne is saying, okay, I will get out there and use your gifts. You are a very gifted young woman, Suzanne, and you know what I'm talking about. Use those gifts of your soul. You beautiful thing, you. Yes. <laughs> Lady Hawk is saying, need more waka lapi. Be right back. Okay. All right. Hey, Coach Dee Dee. Hey, Coach Dee Dee. Oh, my goodness. This morning is just amazing. Hey, Bill Elliott, good to see you. Julie Hedges, this card is for you. Hey, Barb Van Vliet and Meg Hubbard, good to see you. Julie Hedges. Julie, I'm going to read this to you. It's the angel Yehudia. Yehudia is associated with the teachings of the Great Pyramid at Giza, also known as the Initiation. Temple of Initiation, Julie Hedges. The angel Yehudia is here to help you celebrate your life. This splendid angel of light wishes you to know how very much your life positively impacts others. Your service to the light is recognized and honored by your angelic guides and by the one who loves you most of all. Julie, you make a glorious and joyful difference in this world, and you are loved by many of us, and more than you know. Your mantra, Julie Hedges, is this, and this is your homework. On this day, I honor my birth and my purpose for being, which is love. You can stand right in front of the mirror and repeat that to yourself. Good morning, CJ. So for those of you that would like to like and share this show, that would be fantastic. I've decided that trying to share it myself while I'm doing my show really just doesn't work very well. So I'm thankful to all of you that take a moment to share it so people can find their space here with us in sacred space. Meg Hubbard, this one is for you, Meg. The teaching of the Pegasus. 
It's a Greek mythology teaching. The Pegasus, see the beautiful wings attached to a horse, to Shonke. The horse represents freedom, forward movement, right? Passion, unbridled passion. The wings represent spirit and together they represent creative genius. Meg, if you have been stifling your creativity or if a new form of creativity is calling you toward it, the Pegasus is saying, let your creative genius flow. Even if you are thinking to yourself, Meg Hubbard, but what will the neighbors think? What will people think? I'm not a classically trained singer, songwriter, musician, artist. Pegasus says do it anyway. Allow your creativity to flow because if it becomes stagnant, there are all sorts of things that happen when we are not creative, when we don't let our creativity flow. A lot of times we have stomach issues. Get stuck right there in the solar plexus, the bread basket, when we do not let our creativity flow. So I would say to you, Meg, invite the Pegasus in to time of contemplation or meditation or journey work, if that is your path, and get creative, get your creative on. I do that every Friday in the winter. January through March, I have creative time for myself. It's a gift that I give to myself up at the Heartful Art Studio in Big Rapids, Michigan with Nikki and Mugs. It is something that I began to do last year to allow my creativity to flow in different ways. Creatively, I love to write. You all know that. But I also like to create artistically, and that is uh, my outlet for that. Barb Van Vliet, this one is for you. It's the teaching of Cheta, Cheta. Catherine Harrison, her spirit name is Lady Hawk. So we say Cheta Wian in the Lakota language, Cheta Wian, Lady Hawk. The hawk is here for you, Barb Van Vliet. I walk, excuse me, I see things with great clarity. I have nothing to fear. This is a card of fearlessness. Be fearless in your life. Trust what it is that you see. If you need help in seeing something more clearly, thank you, Meg. Love and light to you too. If you are having a problem seeing things clearly, you can call upon the spirit of the hawk of Cheta. You can call upon your angels, your guides, creator, whatever you're comfortable with. But hawk says, move forward. You have nothing to fear. Spirit has your back, creator has your back. I see things with great clarity. I have nothing to fear. Cheta Oyate, the Hawk Nation. Michelle, Michelle, this one is for you. Just gonna take a look here at the scrolling marquee. Michelle. Coach Dee Dee. Michelle. Michelle, oh, it's the teaching of the mermaid. The mermaid actually originated from the ancient teachings in Assyria. There's an old society. The mermaid, of course, represents the divine feminine, our intuition, our female passions, sensuality, passion, intuition, sexuality, and the wisdom of Aquarius are all contained within you and are bidding you to set them free, to explore and express through you in healthy, balanced ways. Michelle, your inner goddess is calling to you, <laughs> calling you to express your watery, intuitive nature through poetry and prose, music and song, movement and dance, sculpture and paint, rattle and drum, water and wisdom. This is about honoring the divine feminine within you, honoring the divine feminine 
within you, those feminine aspects of intuition, the divine oracle. <laughs> and express those, express those. Get in touch with your passion, with your femininity. Take a really long, luxurious bubble bath, whatever that is for you. Years ago, at the behest of my friend Laura Smith, I did a women's group for a year on this very subject about honoring the divine feminine within. And I've been asked also to do that for men's groups, honoring the divine feminine within. And, um, you know, sometimes as women, we can be told that at a certain age, we need to stop feeling sensual. At a certain age, sexuality needs to go by the way. At some people believe at a certain age, you cut off your hair. All of those things. I say being feminine is based on who we are as feminine beings. We don't have to, at a certain age, stop feeling sensual or sexy or wanting to take care of ourselves. That's a bygone era. Barbara's saying, thank you. Been fearful of changes coming in your life. There's one thing about being a woman, and that is the constant of change. Change in our bodies, change in our surroundings and our relationships. Just go with the flow of it. Go with the flow of it, Barb. Allow the change. Be graceful in the change. Coach Didi. Coach Didi and I were just having a conversation about this not too long ago, in fact, about the divine feminine and what constitutes feminine. What constitutes when do you let go of your femininity? When do you engage with your femininity? And this also includes men, right? And going with the flow of the changes that happen intrinsically in being a woman. I don't know what that's like for a man because I'm not one. But I can say, and I know that men also go through changes, but allow the changes in your life, whatever they happen to be, barred to flow with grace. And remember to invite your guardian angels, the creator of all things, to be present along with your soul and your higher self. Yeah, all of you. Coach Didi. Coach Didi, it's the griffin. It's the griffin. The griffin says, be brave, be brave, be bold. You are both human and divine. Your soul is immortal, changing only in form throughout the ages, and you are limitless. The daily mantra of the griffin is this, I face my fears and I overcome them with ease. This is a card of bravery. Whatever you are facing in your life at this time, the griffin would say to you, be brave, Didi, be brave, be brave, be bold, be respectful, but be fearless. Hope that helps. All right, Bill Elliott. It's the white eagle, Bill. We would say, Wambli Shka, white eagle, Wambli eagle, Shka, white White Eagle, Wamblishka. Wamblishka, the teachings of the White Eagle actually come from Atlantis, Atlantean. And when the White Eagle appears, we know that ancient teachings are being revealed to us at this time. I would uh, encourage you during the time of this super moon to go into ceremony, meditation, prayer, all of that, Bill. You can invite the accompaniment of White Eagle, of that particular being, that archetype from the universe, the archetype of light. Full chills, yeah. To be present. And I'm going to leave it at that for you. Rob, Rob Kendall, this one is for you. Oh, okay, Rob. Mikael. The Archangel St. Michael, it almost fell right up, but I caught it. My softball skills like kicked right in, scooped it up. <laughs> Mikael, Michael. 
Mikhail. I celebrate the lessons that I have learned in my life and I rejoice in what they have taught me. I'm gonna say that again, Rob. I celebrate the lessons that I have learned in my life and I rejoice in what they have taught me. Mikhail. There you have it. Nicole Werner. Nicole Werner. <clears throat> it's the Archangel Kamael. I love David Fix's interpretations of the angels. These are just fantastic. Kamael. Kamael is associated with Aries, the sign of Aries. Good morning, Barbie. I've got this. I am bold, brave, and fearless. Yes, you are, Coach Didi. That's why you are our coach. <laughs> okay, Nicole. Kamael says this. And I'm going to read this first paragraph to you. Be confident in who you are and in your ability to decide the course of your own life. You did not come to the earth plane to experience any form of servitude to the vision of life that others have for you. The Archangel Kamael comes to help you remember that the goals and dreams that you have set for yourself are enthusiastically supported by the universe. Go for it. Just be you. And when you're feeling less than confident, overwhelmed, because you know what? We can get that way, all of us. Ask Kamael to be present. Ask Kamael to be present. You know, people say to me, Dana, do you really do, do you really invite angels to be with you or spirit or hawk? Absolutely I do. One time somebody said to me after I gave a presentation in front of a few hundred people, how do you get up there and speak in front of an auditorium full of people? How do you do that? And I said, first and foremost, I never, ever, ever do it alone, ever. Before I ever walk out onto a stage, before I ever begin anything that I do, I have always asked for the divine accompaniment of spirit to be with me. Always, 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 always. So yes, I do. And I would never think to do anything other than that. So I didn't write these. I call these educational flashcards, empowerment cards. They're really very educational flashcards. They're beautiful, aren't they? And so they have teachings on them that happen to be ancient, well-researched, and... Uh, these archetypes exist in the light, whether we believe it or not. Whether we believe it or not. Cheta wian, hihane wash day. Okay, Lady Hawk. It is the teaching of the Sasquatch which of course comes to us from native North America. And the Sasquatch is saying to you, walk gently at this time. Lady Hawk, be gentle with yourself. Be gentle with others. Walk gently at this time. No, no need to force things, to batten your head against a wall, try to unlock a door that is not meant for you to unlock. Sasquatch says, walk gently, be gentle with yourself and others and situations at this time. Nikki Jorgensen, it's the swan maiden, a beautiful mythological being from Scandinavia, a Valkyrie shield maiden, in fact, so it's one of your relatives. Swan Maiden says, remember, you are always divinely protected. Swan Maiden also acknowledges that you have walked through many a hard fought battle in your life. Life has not been easy. Life is not easy. Life is not. Life is not for sissies, right? This human life is not for sissies. It just, woo, 
It's it's a roller coaster, isn't it? It just is. And, you know, some people walk through some pretty tremendous battles. Some people, it seems, don't walk through any. But, you know, battles are all interpreted by those who are fighting them. All right. So always know spirit's got your back. What do I want to say about this? Spirit understands your dedication to the path of light, Nikki. Other people may not understand it. Spirit understands your dedication to the light. What is the light? The light, I believe, is the living expression of love out of the heart and mind of God and the universe. Call it whatever you will. You are a warrior of light, a defender of light. You are a bringer of light. In that, there are many challenges. For those of you that are also light workers, light bringers, holding the light for others in whatever capacity you do, that in and of itself brings challenges. Sometimes those challenges are very deep and very different. Sometimes they come to us from the unseen realms. So I'm just going to keep it there for you, Nikki, and say that spirit's got your back. You are a Valkyrie shield maiden on, on behalf of the light. Keep standing in the light. Keep defending the light. Keep bringing the light, the light of art and all of those beautiful things, right? All right, I'm going to leave that there. <clears throat> Jacqueline Coster. It's the Wakiyam, the Thunder Nation, the Thunder Being. <laughs> Nikki's saying, love, love, love. I get it. <laughs> good. Good, good, good. You know, sometimes as I'm being inspired to say some things, you know, because we all do. Um, I'm just glad that you understand what, what it is that is trying to come through here. All right, so Jacqueline, the Thunderbird, the Wakian, the Wakian. The Wakian thanks you, Jacqueline, for honoring all life forms and for walking gently upon Grandmother Earth. You are a beautiful spoke in the glorious medicine wheel of life. Spirit recognizes the way that you walk your life, Jacqueline. We can fool ourselves. We can try to think we're fooling other people, but we do not fool spirit. We do not fool creator. The all-seeing eye, some people call it. For me, I call it the wakiam, the thunderbird sees everything. And the way that you walk the path is being honored. It is honored. I am one with all in the sacred hoop of life. Not everybody believes that. I would say for that most everyone here on the, that's watching, you understand that we are all related, that what we do to one, we do to all. What we do to ourselves, we do to others. A lot of people in this world don't yet understand that every living thing is our brother and our sister. Everything emanates out of the great lightness of love. Not everybody gets that. When you walk that path of understanding, when you are, as you know, was said to Julie Holt earlier, able to see the creator in everything that you see, including yourself, and you become one with the great mirror, that's walking, that is walking mitakoye oyasi, that is walking mitakwiasin, the teaching we are all related. Not everybody has that gift. And not everybody understands that. So the more that each and every one of us walks that path, the more then it becomes a reality for others. People want to know what your secret is. Why it is that you find joy outdoors. Why it is that you find joy with the four leggeds. Good morning, Patty. Good morning, Daisy. It's good to see you in the house this morning as well. Marilyn Lewis, it's the Archangel Salathiel. Salathiel is the angel of prayer. When Salathiel shows up, 
the teaching of Salafiel shows up. It says this, thank you for being the woman of prayer that you are. Thank you for being an answer to prayer. And it acknowledges the fact that you are always in a constant state of prayer and conversation with God. Marilyn. Walking a prayer, I call it. Pray without ceasing. Well, the ancients believed that every thought that we think is a prayer. Every word that we speak is a prayer. And this is why it is said, pray without ceasing. How are you praying in a good way or a bad way? Salafiel so says, thank you for walking a prayer in a good way, Marilyn. Thank you for being the answer to a prayer for those in need. That does not go unnoticed. You cannot outgive God. You can't. Impossible to outgive God. <clears throat> hey, Candace. Good to see you this morning. All right, Daisy. Good morning, Daisy. It is the Archangel Metatron, once known as the Prophet Enoch. It's all about self-realization, transformation. I am that I am. Daisy, like a beautiful butterfly being called from its shimmering cocoon, your higher presence is calling you to to the phase of learning along your soul's journey. This is a time for advanced esoteric learning. And so what I would say to you, Daisy, is this, pay attention to your intuition. Pay attention to your senses. Be awake, be aware, and trust. And trust your connection to the divine. This is a time of growth for you, Daisy. Be awake and be aware. The difference between the person that's just kind of going along, living their life, and the seer is that the seer is awake and aware of thoughts and feelings and nuances. The seer sees that space that some call the new, N-O-U-S, the new, that space in between physicality and non-physicality. So this is a time of tremendous spiritual growth for you, Daisy. Remember to be balanced, to take time for yourself, and to nurture yourself through this process. So I did what you said. I cut my hair and I'm focusing on myself. There you go. That's right. We have to be good to ourselves, too. Sometimes we can be so busy taking care of everybody else, we forget about us, don't we? We can do that. And it's good to nurture ourselves. We cannot give from an empty basket as my sister Del Marie always says. <laughs> no, Sergio, this is not tarot reading. Okay. All right. Oh, thank you, Bill. You're welcome. All right, so Kelly Holt, here's a little bit of inspiration for your day today. Oh, so a bit of inspiration comes from the Thunderbird, the teaching of the Thunderbird, which is, of course, a teaching that comes from Native North America. The Thunderbird, the Wakia, is saying to you, stay on your path. The Thunderbird teaches us, the Wakia Oyate, the Thunderbird Nation, says to us, stay on your path. Some people may want to knock you off your path. Circumstances may challenge your path. All sorts of things happen during the course of the human life. <laughs> She's saying, oh, love. <laughs> the Thunderbird Nation says, stay the course. Stay the course anyway. Stay the course despite the Debbie Downers, the naysayers, the self-doubt, the gossip. Whatever it happens to be, stay the course. Shine your light. Stay the path, Kelly. Stay on your path. Tana, here's a little spirit of upliftment for you today. It's the eagle, the Wambli Nation. Wambli Oyate. 
Wambli Oyate. Wambli Oyate teaches us to rise above. To rise above. To soar above the mundane, above the turmoil, above the gossip, above circumstances. I see the beauty and the perfection of the great spirit in all things. The Wakiyam tells us to stay on our path. The eagle says, I see your path. I see your path and I see the beauty of you. The eagle sees the beauty of the creator in all things, of Wakantanka in all things, great and small, seen and unseen. Yes, Wambli Oyate, the Eagle Nation is here for you. Connie Vauder. Connie, here is a little bit of inspiration for you this morning. Oh, Tan, I've been through a lot. Oh, love you too, my friend. Sometimes we have to rise above and see things from the Eagle Nation perspective. Eagle Nation. Eagle rises up here. They say that Eagle flies the closest to Wakantanka and listens to the voice of the creator. And the creator says, but I'm in everything. I exist in everything, even the rock. I created even the rock and the oceans and all things. Yeah, including you. Connie Vauder, you beautiful thing. Saint Uriel. Connie, did you get my email yesterday? Connie, since we're talking about messages here. Connie, did you see my email yesterday? If you did not, please go check your email. But first and foremost, here's a little bit of inspiration from the Archangel Saint Uriel. I forgive myself and others by forever giving love. I love my perfect imperfection. Hey, Sergio, I'll draw a card for you for inspiration in just a moment. Uriel, the Archangel of Light. She's saying, I will check. Okay. So love yourself, Connie, in your perfect imperfection, you beautiful thing. <laughs> okay, Sergio. Sergio. In the Native, Native American tradition, we call this being the Cocopelli. The Cocopelli is the bringer of the rains. Cocopelli is the archetype that says, your life is abundant. Your life is abundant. Gratitude is the word for this messenger from mythology. The Cocopelli represents a plentiful harvest. The seeds that you have sown, Sergio, are now growing fully into fruition. This is a sign, or excuse me, a teaching that says those things that we focus on, that we nurture, are the things that we grow in our life. Cocapelli says this is a fertile and abundant time in your life, Sergio. Cocapelli also thanks you for helping other people to see the abundance in their life. Some people cannot see the abundance, the grace in their own life. The Cocapelli thanks you for being one of those people that helps others to see the beauty in all things, including their own life. Sometimes we have to be the cheerleader for another person. We have to help point them into the direction of the beauty in their own lives, the beauty within themselves, the fertility within them, their own selves, the Cocapelli. So thank you for being one of those people as well. Helping others to find the light in their lives, to inspire them, see the light within themselves. Not always easy. Carla Jo. Okay, so Carla Jo, the eclectic pagan, columnist, a magnificent writer. She just is, she has such a gift. From the mythology of the United Kingdom, the UK, 
is the White Heart. The White Heart teaches us about adventure. And Carla Jo, the message for you is let the adventure begin. You ain't seen nothing yet. Bachman Turner Overdrive, you ain't seen nothing yet. Life is a grand adventure that my soul has chosen to experience with endless joy and wonder, says the White Heart. Get ready. I'm gonna, here's what I'm going to say, CJ. Hold on to your hat. Buckle up. Hold on to your hat. Oh, goodness. All right. Who do I need to, to draw a card of inspiration for today? Let me know there in the thread because I probably have gone way off. <laughs> Patty's saying, these are all resonating with me. Thank you, Patty. It is amazing. Some days, um, as I'm even pulling, you know, cards of inspiration for all of you, I'm thinking to myself, wow, you needed to hear that one today, Dana. Dana, that one was meant for you today. Listen up, Dana. <laughs> That's right, Cobb, Rob. <laughs> you just ain't seen nothing yet. That's right. I myself like BTO. Yeah, I do. Oh, is it Stella's birthday today? Barbie, would you let us know? If you could let me know, that would be great. All right, Virginia. Virginia. All right, sometimes this, the cards get a little heated and stick together, so I have to take a minute to separate them. Hey, Audra. Virginia. It's the teaching of Nessie. Loch Ness. When, when the teaching of Loch Ness appears, Loch Ness says, pay attention to your dreams. Not only pay attention to your nighttime dreams, Virginia, but pay attention to where your mind is going when you find yourself daydreaming. Where are you going? The teaching of this beautiful creature of mythology, some would say that it exists in the realm known as the ultra terrestrial realm. My dreams are filled with insight and inspiration pouring forth from the waters of spirit. Daydreams and night dreams are one in the same, except for the placement of the sun and the moon. Pay attention to your dreams. Write them down if you are able to journal them, Virginia. Especially everybody under the potency of this full moon. For those of you that would like to learn more about these things, I do have a group page on Facebook called The Temple Within School of Sacred Studies. Go right on over there and click the join button. And we'll put you in the group. And, you know, these are the things that we post along with the classes that are being taught at the School of Sacred Studies. Well, good morning, Diane. Patty. Patty, this one is for you. It is the Phoenix. The Phoenix says, rise up, rise up, stand up and shine, rise up. It is through the fires of spiritual initiation, says the teaching of the Phoenix, that we experience many deaths without dying. In those small deaths, we are given a choice to succumb to the pain of growth or to employ it as a catalyst to rise from the ashes of what once was and soar to new heights of wisdom and awareness. Patty, honor what has been, the knowledge you have gained, and the wisdom that is now yours. Rise and shine. Rise and shine. There you go. Kathy Skirmerhorn. Kathy. All right. Oh, the angel Chamuel. One of the teachings of Chamuel is this. Love yourself. 
love yourself. Chamuel is the angel, oh love, the angel of love. I am a living expression of the eternal light of love. I welcome love into my life. Chamuel reminds us that our essence is love. Our essence is light. And boy, we can all forget that during the course of life. We get caught up in stuff, don't we? Human stuff. And sometimes we need to just pause and think about that. Oh my goodness, that's right. This human reality that I'm living in this moment is very brief. My origin is light. My origin is love. I am light and love. Love yourself, Kathy. She says she's working on that. Yes, Michelle, I did pull a card for you. Uh, and she is expecting. Oh, how wonderful. <laughs> okay, so for the baby, the white buffalo calf woman, that is a very auspicious sign for baby. Te sawia, the white buffalo calf woman. She is known by many names. The Blessed Mother, Guanim, the Sophia, God the Mother, the White Buffalo Calf Woman. My life is a sacred journey. That's pretty, pretty special. White Buffalo Calf Woman. It's all about walking in balance, being in balance, giving and receiving. That is a very auspicious card for the little one. I'm glad that you did too. Yay. <laughs> Jennifer Guinevere. Okay, listen. She's like my little sister. That's why I talk to her like that. She's like one of my little sisters. Jennifer, you are a beautiful being of light. Connie saying, you made me cry. <laughs> Connie, you made me cry, but thank you. I am, oh, we love you too, Connie. You're very, very welcome. You are very welcome. We love you too. You're welcome, Michelle. Yes. Okay, Guinevere, listen, Jennifer. The name Jennifer is a derivative of Guinevere. You are a being of love and light. You are a woman of love and light. You are a woman of healing, love and light. When you are challenged by anything less than that, it is because that thing that seeks you is looking for the healing, love and light that you are. Everything in the universe is always looking for love. Everything. Because love is our home and we're always looking for home. We are, we are as Ram Das, Baba Ram Das says, we are all walking each other home. All of us right now in this space, we are all walking one another home via this human journey. When we walk with healing, love and light, those things that are looking for healing, love, and light will challenge us in their need for our love and our light, like moths to a flame, even in our dream time. Even in our dream time. Everything is searching for love. Sometimes what is searching for love is in the unseen world. And I know you all know what I'm talking about because this is why so many of us are the people that others seek out for consolation, for goodness, right? Am I right? You made me cry. Aww. Just remember that. And I'm going to leave that there. There's no need to draw a card for you this morning. It is what it is. It is how it is. 
Sometimes I just got to go way off the map here. Janet, thank you for that. Janet is saying, I love your book and I enjoy the prayers. Thank you for that. Oh, good morning, Sherry. Absolutely. All right. Back on point. Janet. 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 It is the teaching from ancient Greece, Greek mythology known as the Hippocamp. And yes, I just have way too much fun with these cards on my show. He's swimming. The Hippocamp. The Hippocamp is the seahorse. Don't you love those little seahorses? Are they the cutest thing ever? I think they're just adorable. Ride with the tide, Janet. Ride with the tide. In order to experience, in order for the experiences of your life to unfold in their proper timing and joyfully deliver you to what is next, you must give up the white knuckle ride and your struggle for control. Take a deep breath, Janet. Exhale and trust in what your timeless soul and the creator of the infinite universes have planned for you. This is a time of great forward movement in your life if you allow it. Your daily mantra, Janet, is this. The wisdom of my soul safely guides me to and through each experience of my life. Oh, thank you for that, Katie. So let go of the steering wheel. <laughs> no need to hold on to the steering wheel. Sometimes we have to let go of that bugger and just go for the ride. Here we are with it. Okay. Oh, thank you, Kat, Katie. Katie Battle. Mary Ellen. Hey, Mary Ellen. How are you? I love Mary Ellen. Okay, Mary Ellen. Oh, this is a good one for you. It's the raven. The raven. The raven is a very courageous being. The raven is a leader. Raven will take a leadership role in walking through the fires for others to retrieve the light and the wisdom. I seek and find the light in all things, and I share my light with the world. Raven often represents those people that are willing to go into new things, into new teachings, into the depth of ancient wisdom first. In their group of people, their family, their friends, you are welcome, Janet. Perhaps you are one of those listening to this at this time. And not everybody understands the one who wants to go deep into uh, philosophy, spirituality, spirituality, arcane teachings, wisdom teachings. Why would anybody want to do that? There are those that go in to the ancient teachings in order to retrieve their wisdom and share it. But there's this thing that happens in the world. When do you begin a study of anything. Have you ever noticed everybody that when you begin to study a certain teaching, all of a sudden those teachings become real. We're given examples of walking through or with those teachings on the earth plane. The Raven is one of those magnificent allies of those who will walk where angels fear to tread in order to expose the light. And that's you, Mary Ellen. That is you. There you have it. Sherry. Sherry. It is the centaur. Love this one. I love the centaur in Harry Potter. <clears throat> the centaur, of course, comes to us from Greece, and he is known as the divine doctor. Healer, heal thyself says the centaur. This is a card of nurturing yourself, Sherry. What about you, says the centaur? What about you? Are you taking care of you or are you busy taking care of everybody else, Sherry? And she's a Sagittarian. Well, there you go. This is about the Sagittarian you. And it's about focusing. Sagittarians are amazing at focusing. Focusing. 
This card says, Sherry, focus on yourself. Take good care of you. Yeah, she takes care of everyone else. Yeah, no, this card is saying, oh, that's marvelous. And thank you for being so good to people. But it's also saying, now it's your turn. It's now your turn to take care of you. She's saying, I feel broken and run down. Yes. This card is saying, stop. Just stop. Take a deep breath and focus on you. And that's not easy to do. It's not easy to take a five minute break when you're used to run, 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 run. Yes, she's saying, I hope so it is. It is time for you. Make time for you. Make time for you. Recently, I was talking to my son. He and I had breakfast. And in the course of our conversation, we were talking about the fact that for many, 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 many years, I worked seven days a week for many years. Particularly as a single mom, we can find ourselves working seven days a week, 10, 12 hour days. And I did this for so long that when the time finally came for me not to have to work seven days a week, I could dial back to six days a week. And then I could dial back to five days a week. I didn't even know how to make that happen. I didn't know, my body did not know how to consider myself because it was entrained. And so all of us are sending you lots of love, Sherry, and helping you to take good care of you. It's something sometimes we have to retrain ourselves to do. Yes, yeah, so lots and lots of love to you. We can, all of us, get to that place where we feel like we have been run over, chewed up, spit out, and run over again in the process of taking care of others. We lose ourselves. And then comes the day when we decide that we are, like the phoenix, going to rise from the ashes and consider ourselves. So, Miss Sagittarius, the focus is on you, and we are going to focus some love and prayer for you to help give you strength. Sometimes we need strength and courage to get up and over that. Yes, and get safely on our way down the yellow brick road. So I'm glad that you joined us this morning. Oh my, yes, says Delgadillo, yes. Uh-huh. All right, who else shall I draw a bit of inspiration for this morning? If there is anyone, please. Well, hello, Jocelyn. This one is for you, Jocelyn. You are welcome. There is, you know, just a wonderful, she's saying, I have no support. Well, here on Tuesday mornings, and we've been doing this for years, people come and go in the chat. But on Tuesday mornings, we find a place of respite here, a place of sacred space. And in the 10 years that I have been doing, for years I did a TV network uh, on another station. And then I went to radio, blog talk radio, blog talk radio again. And here I am back on this format. What has always been so beautiful to me are the connections that can be made in this way and are made in this way. And I love it for the first time when people come to the School of Sacred Studies and they get to see each other for the very first time. So you're so-and-so from the chat room. I finally get to meet you. So the support here is real. It's real. And Tuesday mornings is about community. It's about community. And that's why I ask everyone to share what you've got going on. What have you got going on? Share. It's community. Audra DeVries. You beautiful thing, you, my friend Audra. IML, it's the card of change, the angel of change. IML says, take the leap. Take the leap of faith. Keep the faith. And remember that when we take a leap of faith, the net of love always appears and cradles us in a space to grow. Take the leap, Audra. Take a leap of faith. IML is with you. The winds of change are here. Sometimes the winds of change are internal. Sometimes they are external. But in either event, whether it's internal or external, 
IML says, take the leap of faith. Believe in yourself. The net of love will appear. Margaret Spooner. Margaret. Margaret. It's the firebird. Oh, I love this card. Firebird. The firebird says, Margaret, do not be afraid, be alive. Do not be afraid, be alive. Be alive. <laughs> Beloved being of the light, says the firebird. Margaret, you have always been and you shall always be. With this knowledge, live your life with boundless passion. Shine your light with joyful abandon. Live on and live again. Your mantra, I am eternal. I am not afraid. I am alive. Sometimes we can be afraid to be alive or to start all over again. We can call upon the spirit of the firebird, that archetype that lives in the universal light. We can call upon firebird for strength and courage. We can call upon Michael. Yes, hello, Kimberly. Do not be afraid, be alive. You know, one of the things I loved about skiing for the very first time on Saturday is this. You know, what? how many years ago was it? 12 years ago, I had a left brain stroke. And I was told I would probably never walk again. I would never write my name again. I wouldn't be able to do a whole lot of things ever again. Ever again. And one thing about being me is that if somebody tells me never again or you're not going to, that is a challenge from the universe right to my soul. And so the first time that I made it all the way down, slaloming down the bunny hill, I stopped for a minute. And my instructor, Patrick, we high-fived. In fact, then we, you know, high 10. I said, you know, I was told many years ago I would never walk again. I would never be able to write my own name again or tie my own shoes again. I was told to get the Velcro tennis shoes and I just skied. He looked at me and he said, what are you talking about? And I told him, do not be afraid, be alive. And so the next time I see my neurologist, I'll be sharing with Dr. Farouk. <laughs> Guess what I did? I went skiing for the very first time. Todd is a semi-pro snowboarder during his University of Michigan years. And so he loves to snowboard. He was a racer. And uh, he enjoys being in the snow as much as I enjoy being in the surf. So why not? Don't be afraid, be alive. Jocelyn. Yes, Carla Jo will be teaching the Arts of Divination at the School of Sacred Studies on March 31st. If you go to the uh, Temple Within School of Sacred Studies group page, you'll see lots of events. I've got them there. David Fix, my dear friend, is working on my new website to have the classes posted. But for now, we have classes that are posted on the group page, just so you can mark your calendar. That class is nearly full already, CJ as is uh, the working with crystals class is nearly full. And so is the class with Catherine Skaggs nearly full. Lots of full curriculums. Jocelyn, Jocelyn, this one is for you. Kelly, yes. <laughs> my rock star girlfriend, Slope Bunny. Uh, just one of the hundreds of reasons why you are my best friend, warrior, yeah. Patrick said to me, so how did you make that work? And I said, well, you know, if you have a left brain stroke, there are certain things you have to say to your body as you're getting ready to head down the hill, especially when we went to the big girl hill. You know, there I was on the <laughs> lift. Big difference between the biggest hill on the slopes and the bunny hill. So you really do have to have a little conversation with yourself. A little conversation with your allies and your guardian angels because you look straight down and you think, okay, 
here we go. Don't be afraid. Be alive, Dana. Don't be afraid. Be alive. All right. Yeah, there were a couple of wipeouts that I was happy to be alive after, frankly, <laughs> looking up. Kelly, I was on that hill right next to where they do the, where we did our um, uh, sledding. That big hill? Yeah, that's where I was. I had a couple of pretty good wipeouts. But it happens. You know, years ago, I was surfing with a man named Ipo on the island of Maui. I wanted to go surfing and somebody said to me, go to this beach and ask for Ipo. So I guess this was about nine years ago. So I found Ipo and a very elderly Hawaiian man. And I, he said, hey, it's good to meet you. What's going on? I said, Ipo, I want to go surfing. He said, all right, let's go surf. So I, we suited up and Ipo and I went out and I hadn't surfed since the stroke. And uh, well, I caught my first wave in and then I caught a big old pile of rocks near the beach. There I was <laughs> surfing Hawaii Five-O style. And the next thing I know, I am looking at Ipo from under the water. I'm looking up at him and I hit the rocks. It knocked the wind out of me. And there is Ipo, real dark skin, beautiful silver long hair in his 70s looking at me. And he's mouthing something to me. And pretty soon he picks me up by the arm and he said, well, I was wondering if you were going to lay there like a flounder for the rest of your life or if you were going to get back up and surf again. <laughs> and I looked at him and I said, that hurt. And he said, hey, look, there's a double set coming in. Let's go catch him. And so he and I went out. We caught the double set, came back in. And then we were kind of relaxing on our surfboards. And he looked at me and he said, you know, life is like that. Sometimes you hit the rocks. But the question is always going to be, are you going to get up from the rocks and surf again? I never forgot that. I kind of felt like that on Saturday, particularly after one little crash and burn as I laid there looking up at the sky. <laughs> are you going to lay there like a snowball? Or are you going to get up and ski again? Back up the hill I went. Right? So a little wisdom from Ipo, who was a Hawaiian huna. He and I had some very deep chats that day in between catching waves. So yeah, I was well into my 40s. I was, what, 47 out there surfing on Maui. But I learned how to surf as a young young girl, so I don't know why I'm even talking about that. Jocelyn's the wolf. I don't know why I do that, but I get off on these little benders, little tangents. The wolf. Jocelyn, Shunkmani to Tonka, the wolf is the teacher. It's a teacher. You're a teacher, Jocelyn. It's time to uh, place that mantle on yourself and acknowledge it within yourself. You are a teacher. You are a sage woman. A saged woman. Acknowledge that and honor that within yourself, please. Hold circle tomorrow night. Ceremony tomorrow night. Diane. This one is for you. Diane says, inspirational words, social worker, stay-at-home mother of four sons, three of which special health needs, working hubby, hubby, hoping to move into a bigger home. Wow, you're a busy woman, Diane. It's the angel Nathaniel, the angel of joy. It's the angel of joy. Joy is a state of grace, says Nathaniel. It is the art of being in love with your life and all aspects and experiences of your life. It is the understanding that your unique existence is like a splendid thread of silk that is continuously weaving itself into the magic carpet of life. Diane, the angel Nathaniel asks you to join him on the magic carpet and fall in love with yourself and your life once again. It's like, get fired up about life. 
and your daily mantra. I am fired up about life and I am joyful in my existence. This is a card of joy, of joyfulness. Have fun in your new home. Have fun with that. Don't forget to have fun. I just need to type something here real quick. People always ask, Denise, why didn't you mention your website? How are we supposed to find you if you don't do that? Mary Ann Malika. <laughs> Sounds like my last attempt. In the moment. That's right, Diane. In the moment. Be in the moment. Yes, be in the moment. And go for it. Just go for it. I love it when Nathaniel shows up. It's like, yeah, get fired up about life. Be in the moment. Be in the now. Live life. Live life. All of it. And it's not always pretty, is it? But that's just keeping it real. Sometimes it's a pain in the you-know-what life. It seems like it is. But you know what? Nathaniel says, get fired up. Get joyful. Here you go. All right, Marianne Malika. <clears throat> All right, last card of the day, I do believe. That's right, get back up. <laughs> get back up. <laughs> All right. Marianne Mollica, it's the Thrye. The Thrye says, pay attention to your intuition because Marianne, at this time, your intuition is very, very heightened. It is very heightened. Be aware, be consciously aware of everything that is going on around and within you and trust it. Be mindfully consciously aware. Diane is saying, no fakiness here. No. <laughs> I was raised by the Sarge. Oh, goodness. Oh, my. Love my dad. Good morning, Xander. Good morning, Xander. All right. I'll draw a card for Xander this morning. All right. Xander. It's interesting because when I feel your name, when I feel your name, I feel that you are a very uh, intuitive man. Very intuitive man. Okay, <clears throat> it is the cricket teaching for you, Xander. The cricket says, shine your light and sing your song. Shine your light and sing your song. Sometimes we don't fully shine our light for a variety of reasons. Sometimes we don't sing our song for a variety of reasons. And yet the world needs your light. The world needs your song. The world needs your gifts and your talents. We all need them. The cricket says, sing your song. Be you. The world needs your light, needs your gifts, needs your talents. Yes, it is a good thing. It is a good thing. Our light is a good thing. What we what we shine from our love and our light 
is a good thing. Shine your light. Violet. Good morning, Violet. All right. Violet, it's the teaching of the donkey nation. You're welcome, Xander. Get out there and shine. You've been given beautiful gifts and beautiful talents. Employ them, share them with the world. A lot of people look up to you and you don't know it. Violet, the nation called the donkey nation says this. It's okay to say no. It's okay to say no. I selflessly serve, says the donkey, and yet I know when to say no. When we give to ourselves, we are able to give to others in a balanced way. It can be hard to say no. It's Not only is it okay to say no, it's healthy to say no. I selflessly serve and yet I know when to say no. So this is a wonderful inspirational reminder to you, Violet, that it is okay to say no. Sometimes we just have to. You're welcome, Xander. Alexandria, good morning. Last card of the day. Last card of the day. It's the Archangel Advakiel. I, I love this teaching. And I'm going to read Alexandria's card right out loud as we wrap up, because this is a beautiful teaching. The contemplative word for Advakiel is hope. Those of you born under the sign of Sagittarius, Advakiel is one of your angelic team members. And here is the message from Advakiel. If hope springs eternal, then it most certainly sprang from the very same fount as that of your timeless soul. The Archangel Advakiel teaches us that there is no room for doubt in the heart and mind of the one who realizes that with every storm comes a rainbow, with every ending a fresh beginning, and with every heartbreak a new love is found. Alexandria. Advakiel thanks you for being the voice of hope for others and for understanding that sunrises are the result of sunsets. A beautiful sunrise is on your horizon. Your daily mantra, the daily mantra of Advakiel is this, I embrace each moment of my life knowing that love surrounds me. This is a card, Alexandria, that says thank you for being the voice of hope, for helping to lift others up. Beautiful thing. Speaking of lifting each other up, shine your light, everybody. Shine your light. Robin McCarthy, <clears throat> please do focus on the Archangel Saint Gabriel this week. Gavrael. All right. Thank you for a beautiful Tuesday morning of upliftment, insight, inspiration, just getting together and being good to one another, inspiring one another to shine our light, to get out there and sing our song, right? to be kind in this world. You're welcome, Alexandria. To be kind to one another, to be kind to every living thing. With that, everyone, blessings be. Get out there and shine your light. No one else can shine it like you do.